What is happening everyone? Good afternoon to you all. This is Jim from RC After Dark doing an unboxing video for you guys today. We will be unbox unboxing this Vatera 1986 K5 Chevy Blazer Ascender. Certainly not a new vehicle by any means. Uh, this vehicle has been out for many years. But my brother, my brother had recently found this online at a local hobby store that I used to shop at before I moved up here. <laughs> uh, their name is Nankin Hobby in Farmington Hills, Michigan. That's N-A-N-K-I-N -N Hobbies in Farmington Hills, Michigan. They actually have a few stores in uh, southeast Michigan there. My brother had found this in their online store. Uh, apparently they had two left, so if anybody's looking for an old Vatera K5 Blazer, <laughs> Nankin Hobbies in Farmington Hills still has one left in stock that they will be willing to sell you. So, uh, Nevertheless, my brother had found this online. He liked it so much that he decided to order it, and here it is. So let's take a peek at it, guys. Vatera, it is a shared passion for motorsports and radio control. Extreme performance in extreme places. Cars and trucks that look and drive just like the real thing. Most of all, it's about gathering friends, grabbing a vehicle, and having the time of your life. Adventure driven. Gotta like it. Horizon Hobbies, manufacturer. Rise above. In the world of scale RC off-road trucks, close enough just won't cut it. Bodies must look authentic, and the chassis has to be able to handle anything a full-scale truck could. This ready-to-run, one-tenth scale version of a lifted Chevy K5 Blazer delivers all that and more. At the heart of its incredibly scale performance is the Vatera Ascender chassis. The innovative platform takes scalar technology to new heights with features like stamped steel ladder frames, an adjustable wheelbase, a metal gear transmission, and one of the most capable off-road suspensions available. Well, once again, this is a very old truck, so most of that has probably been surpassed. <laughs> Taking a look at what we have inside the vehicle here, waterproof electronics, spectrum waterproof receiver, rugged long travel suspension, scale four-wheel drive ascender chassis, dynamite brushed crawler motor, licensed 1986 Chevy K5 Blazer painted body, a Spectrum DX2E radio, 2.4 gigahertz, Dynamite Waterproof ESC, Licensed Interco Super Swamper Tires, Spectrum S605 Waterproof Metal Gear Steering Servo, a Single Speed Metal Gear Transmission, and four AA batteries for the transmitter. So that's kind of nice that they include the batteries along with it. Let's take a, give this box a little spin and see what we've got on the other side. we got a sideways view, so let's flip it over. Alright, designed and built and backed. Horizon Hobby is a world leader in RC fun. Every product we make is driven by industry leading innovation and engineering and backed by exceptional customer service and support. Looking at our chassis, we have the back of the vehicle, a receiver box, ESC, motor, transmission, transfer case, battery tray, steering servo. This groundbreaking four-wheel drive platform takes scalar technology to new heights and features like stamped steel ladder frames. New heights with features like stamped steel ladder frames, an adjustable wheelbase, a metal gear transmission, and one of the most capable off-road suspensions available. Well, once again, several years old, so I'm sure this has all been surpassed. Three-link panned barred front suspension, floating battery tray over front axle, rock slider sidebars, four-link rear suspension, crawler-style bumpers, aluminum suspension links, Threaded oil-filled shocks, metal gear transmission, heavy-duty CV front shafts. Well, that's nice to know. Well, let's give her a spin and see what's on the other side. And this is the other end of the box. We have included Vatera 110th scale 1986 K5 Blazer truck. Features an ascender scale four-wheel drive chassis with waterproof electronics, a dynamite power system, 2.4 gigahertz transmitter, full-range spectrum 2.4 gig DX2E transmitter, four AA batteries included for use with transmitter. Needed to complete, batteries sold separately, a shorty pack. They recommend a Dynamite Reaction 7.4 volt, 4000 milliamp, 2S50C hard case, um, and a charger as well. Quick look at the battery tray that we bought for that uh, Vatera solid mount battery tray conversion for the Ascender. Part number VTR331016. That's VTR331016. And there is a look at our optional flat mount solid mount battery tray uh, looking at the other side of the box pretty basic just another look at our truck once again sorry about the uh, lighting here everyone we were actually outside taking advantage of this nice warm sunny day so actually doing an unboxing outside while the snow melts taking a peek at the top of the box just visual visual of our truck 
our officially licensed vehicle, Matera Sender K5 Blazer, waterproof servo receiver and ESC, make a splash, a Sender scale four-wheel scale four drive chassis, realistic four-wheel drive action, licensed 1986 Chevy K5 Blazer body, incredible detail. Well, we'll get the box open on this thing and see what she has to say on the inside. Go ahead, Ian, and pull the lid off her. Once again, this is my brother's truck, so he is going to be pulling the lid off of this vehicle. And we will just take a peek and see what we have inside. We're looking at our truck right now, still in the box. Going to have my brother start unpackaging this baby. Pulling out some foam. Pulling out a cardboard protector, which nothing inside that. Radio gear. Radio? Well, let's go ahead and open that up and see what she contains. And here's a quick look at our radio, everyone. It's a Spectrum DX2E DSMR radio system. It runs on four AA batteries. One, two, three, four. Very basic radio. We have a steering rate dial right there on the side. Plastic steering wheel, no foam grip or anything on it. Throttle trim, steering trim, a bind button, a power button. So we have some servo reversing buttons here, uh, steering, normal, reversed, throttle, normal, and reversed. So there is a basic look at our little two-channel radio that came along with it. Alright, taking a look at our truck here, I'm going to once again try to find a good angle that we can work with. Alright there, E, let's get this guy pulled out of the box so we don't have to deal with this crap anymore. We have it out of the box. It did come with a manual and the sticker kit. The sticker kit did include a bunch of black inserts right here that if you wanted to, you could insert into the grill. The grill is equipped with LED headlight buckets and turn signal buckets as well as uh, light sockets or buckets in the front bumper for LEDs. Uh, nothing in the back as far as on the body. Just have stickers here on the taillights. And um, it does have, looks like it has a couple of inserts here on the back as well for some backup lights on the bumper. So I guess that's a positive note. Relatively decent body, uh, decent paint job on it. Although after looking at it here, we did notice that it has a few small blemishes along the side uh, where someone was a little bit careless with their taping. And along the back here. But other than that, it's a very nice looking truck. Uh, Interco Super Swamper tires, plastic wheels, tires are glued to the wheels, foam's inside. So we'll probably be using that, uh, uh, probably be using a heat gun or uh, possibly a five gallon bucket and some acetone and uh, try separating these tires from the wheels at some point in time or another. Thanks to everyone out there for all your suggestions and ideas on how to unglue wheels or unglue tires from wheels. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this baby disconnected. Uh, she is zip tied down to the box, so we'll get that undone and go ahead and pull our plastic off of the roof and see what she's all about. All right, well, we got her zip tie cut. She's kind of dangling underneath. There we go. We'll just get that baby out of there. I think there's something inside there. That's what she said. Alrighty, everyone, inside the little cardboard support hold down thingamajabber there, <laughs> uh, we found a box wrench and some basic tools, a uh, new servo horn, some Allen wrenches, uh, some other stuff that I do not recognize <laughs> as of yet, but uh, we'll figure all that stuff out. So that's kind of cool. It did come with some basic tools and batteries and whatnot. Yeah, that's... yeah start removing the plastic on this bad boy and... So we can get a peek at their body. There we go. I think we want some bigger pins for it or something. Yeah, looking at the body pins, you can see that the front are uh, horizontal and the rear ones are vertical. Which I suppose uh, works out okay. It looks all right.
And that is the body coming off of it. And taking a peek at our underside of the body, nice and clean. You see our uh, headlight buckets there on the front. Where we can install LED headlights if we wanted to. Uh, nothing in the back once again. Hand that off to you there, brother. And there you go, everyone. We've got the body off of it. Plastic rear bumper, plastic bumper mount. Here's a look at our waterproof receiver box right here. And our receiver antenna tube. Our dynamite ESC with a rubber cap on off switch, quote unquote waterproof. Taking a look at our transmission. Basic single speed transmission transfer case combination. Very similar, similar to a Vatera Twin Hammers transmission, uh, with the exception there'd be a shift servo sitting up here. Uh, there would be a shift rod going through here with a servo horn on the end and a shift fork going into the transmission for shifting it from high to low. But very similar, but yet slightly different than the Twin Hammers transmission. We see our servo wires. Our servo wire is running down the length of the frame. Very neatly tied down, so that's pretty cool. Our floating battery tray, which is tied to the front axle. Once again, not a new vehicle. Everybody knows about this. Taking a look at our front bumper, plastic front bumper, plastic bumper mount. Plastic uh, cross members on the frame for the servo mounts. Notice on the front bumper that it does have this little plate right here that you can remove just below that Vatera emblem. And that is in the shape of a winch fair lead. And then I notice on the back edge of the bumper, right down in here, which we're never going to be able to really see uh, right in this area, it kind of has the shape of a winch fair lead in there, so it looks like it might be a winch friendly bumper. Unsure on that. Looking down the other side of the truck, motor wires ran somewhat neatly down the frame. This one's kind of hanging loose over here. I did notice that it does have these uh, metal barrels or metal cylinders. On the positive and negative wire, they're actually running through that little cylinder. It's not magnetic. It's not sticking to the motor. It's the first time I've ever seen anything like that. Really don't know what it's for. Only thing I can think of is to eliminate electronic noise. Um, but I'm not too sure. So that's a basic look at it. A battery cable there, battery connection. Another thing that I noticed is that we've got this wire for our kill switch is hanging down below the ESC. And it's really close to the drive shaft. I can see that right off the bat. That might be a future problem. After flipping the truck over, getting a better view at it, you can see there's that little wire that I'm talking about right there. It is really close. You know, the drive shaft is actually hitting that wire. So I'm going to have to reroute that wire to a different position so it's not hitting any, uh, any of the drivetrain components there. Now looking at the side of the vehicle, this does have an adjustable wheelbase on it. I did notice some adjustments right here on the front half of the frame. Some extra holes with some markers on there. Not really seeing anything on the back other than this little hole right back here. Um, not as easy to adjust the wheelbase as it is on the Red Cat Gen 8. But once again, this is an older truck. Not too sure about the links. They may be adjustable. I see a little gap right up here. So this might be an adjustable link or these may be adjustable links, but I'm not too sure on that. So don't quote me on any of that. Once again, first time Vatera owner here. Um, brother actually being the one who owns it, <laughs> and not myself. Uh, but looking at it, um, it's definitely a nice solid truck. One thing that I'm not really liking are the ring and pinions on this. The way that drive shaft enters the pinion here. It looks like a universal joint right there. Um, looks like a good spot for mud and dirt and whatnot to get jammed up into. Same on the front axle. A little bit of a universal joint on that. Uh, pinion output shaft there so might be a spot where mud and water can enter the axle um, they do have seal bearings on them so that is a good note now I just pulled out the gen 8 just for comparison everyone for a little side-by-side -side on the wheelbase adjustment we can see that the gen 8 has several adjustment points for the upper and lower trailing arms on the axles you can move these in and out front and rear both have several adjustment points. That's for the lower A arm or lower link bars there for the axle. They also have multiple adjustments right here on the axle itself. You can move this other link to this next position. You can also take this bracket off the axle, flip around upside down, reattach it for even more adjustments on that. 
Same with on the front axle. You can move this link from this position to the next position. You can take this bracket off, flip it around, get even more adjustment out of it if you want to lift the truck even higher. And then we have more adjustments right here for the upper links where we can move those forward or backward. Same with the links on the front right here. You can move those forward and backward as well. So a lot, of, a lot more adjustments on the Gen 8. Looks like it's a lot more user friendly for adjusting for a different wheelbase. Um, just using your stock trailing arms. Once again, not too sure if these are adjustable or not. They do appear to be adjustable. Looks like there's a little threaded collar right there, but unsure on that. Then looking at the top of the Gen 8, we can also see how things have progressed over the years with overall design and whatnot with our motor forward design, similar to a Trail Finder 2 or to the TRX4, motor in the front of the truck, transmission, transfer case, inner fender wells all the way around, battery in the center, versus the old style Viterra, motor and transmission in the middle back here, battery at the front, servo at the front, receiver and electronics at the back, slightly different design, frame rails are about the same width from the two of them, Viterra or the Gen 8 starts out narrow at the back, gets wider at the front and then comes becomes narrow again, whereas this one is pretty much the same width from front to rear. So the basic look at the two vehicles. Doing a little uh, hillbilly measurement here, side to side. It looks like they both have about the same axle width on them. And then looking up top, they both appear to have pretty close to the same wheelbase on them as well. Very close to the same wheelbase between the Gen 8 and the Viterra Ascender Blazer. I've gone ahead and reattached the body back on the truck. Checking out some of the articulation on this vehicle, and I can notice right off the bat that the tires are getting into the fenders quite a bit there. So we're gonna have to be doing some, uh, gonna have to do some fender trimming here, most likely. Gonna have to trim a little bit off the edge of these fenders just so we get some better clearance with those tires. Same thing on the front axle. Uh, you start tweaking the suspension left to right or up and down. And that tire is starting to bite on the fender. You can only imagine if you're turning the tires that it's going to be chewing on them a little bit more. So we're probably going to have to trim the fenders back here a little bit. Same on the front. Just so we can get some uh, extra tire clearance there so they're not rubbing as bad. Uh, the body mounts are adjustable so we can raise those up slightly if we need to. We could put a slight body lift on it to get past that rub. But um, down here in the corners it's still going to catch. So pretty much need to nip a little bit off of each one of these ends here just to make that a little bit more uh, silent when we're going off-road. And there's a little head-on view with the Viterra sender on the left, Red Cat Gen 8 Scout 2 on the right. Uh, don't be fooled <laughs> by that low-slung Scout 2. That thing is an animal off-road. Um, the Scout 2 is also sitting on some relatively flat tires, no foams in these. It does have some suspension sag going on here, whereas the Viterra really has absolutely no suspension sag. It is just sitting right up all the way. Gen 8 has quite a bit of suspension sag going on, quite a bit of droop there. So uh, good to have some droop with your suspension, not a bad thing. But definitely Viterra sitting a little bit taller than the old Gen 8 there, but not by much. And a view from the back side, looking at both vehicles, looking at our axle height, really not much of a difference there. Um, Viterra straight axles, no portals. Gen 8 is rocking the portals. And uh, you know what? The Gen 8's only a pinch higher off the ground. <laughs> but once again, we are sitting on foamless tires, so they are relatively flat. And uh, if they had a little bit more, if they had foams in them, it would probably be sitting up just a little bit higher. So we have to take that into note or into consideration. That's a look at both of the back vehicles from the back here. And here's a look at our manual, everyone. I uh, pull open up the plastic bag, take a look at our manual. It's just basically a big piece of paper all folded up. <laughs> so not much of a manual here. Uh, how to remove the body, basic walkthrough on the radio, battery location and mount. Uh, just some basic nonsense, really. Nothing very special going on here with their manual. Probably has the same crap in several different languages. bunch of blah 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 in the back so uh, pretty much seems like fire starter to me. Gonna fold this little piece of paper back up I guess and uh, put it away. But that is a peek at 
the manual that came along with it. And here we are looking back at the driver's side of the vehicle and I just noticed it has no mirrors on it, driver's side or passenger side. So we'll probably have to get some mirrors for this thing somewhere in the future just to improve the scale looks of the overall vehicle. Uh, but that's pretty much going to do it for the video, everyone. Much appreciated for everybody sticking around and watching it to the end. Uh, certainly not a new vehicle by any means. Old truck. Uh, but it is new to the channel, and it was a brand new vehicle out of the box. So <laughs> it's still a brand new vehicle, even though it is several years old. Um, but I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, once again, if anybody's looking for one of these K5 Blazers, I'm pretty sure Viterra is not making them anymore. Uh, we did find this one at a hobby store in Farmington Hills, Michigan. Uh, they do have an online store that you can that you can go to. Uh, the name of the hobby store is Nankin Hobby, N-A-N-K-I-N -N Hobbies in Farmington Hills, Michigan. Once again, they do have an online store. Not being sponsored by them in any way, shape, or form. Just letting you guys know if someone out there is looking for a K5 Blazer or a Sender, they do have one left at one of their stores. So feel free to look them up if you're looking for one. But that's going to do it, everyone. Thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you all on the next one.